Welcome to this new episode of The Context. I want to talk to you about telepresence, starting with an anecdote. A couple of years ago, maybe three, I was invited uh, at a conference in Berlin, and I really wanted to go, but I couldn't because I was due to speak the same day in Rome. Not exactly at the same time, so I checked if logistically it was possible for me to get to the airport, fly to Berlin, then get to the conference venue, but no, it would have been impossible. Maybe with a personal helicopter, if it could have left from the Rome venue and landed in the Berlin venue, but probably not even. So I thought how I could be there. And of course, many of you uh, will have seen Uh, those uh, tiny um, self-moving robots that are remotely controlled and have nothing but uh, basically a screen, more or less at uh, human height, and they are your avatar because they represent you in the remote environment. And you can wheel around and uh, you can go on stage, off stage, you can even mix up uh, with the audience. And Yes, I did use uh, one of those actually the first time in uh, 2008 at one of the founding meetings of Singularity University uh, where I wasn't there physically and without even knowing I was actually inhabiting this uh, mechanical body and I was very, very excited about the experience itself. And and, and yes, I could tell uh, a little bit more about what insights that provoked. But back to this Berlin thing instead, I didn't want the mechanical experience. For whatever reason, I I didn't feel I I would be happy with it. I wanted something more human. I wanted a human telepresence experience. So what did I do? I searched online and I searched for a mime because I wanted the mime's human body to represent me in the conference. And how would it be me? Well, I imagined that I could have the iPad. It was the year that iPad Pros just came out. In some way attached to the mime's head. And then I could connect via whatever video uh, connection. Uh, It could be FaceTime or Skype or whatever else. And I could even see the audience and then the mime could move and, and gesticulate like I would. So it was amazing to find that not only I could find the mime and then negotiate uh, the, the, the whole engagement with him. But actually this mime had a specialty of going around Berlin with a robotic head, which was more or less a cube, and he would mime to be a robot. So... He was very excited as well. And the only thing we needed to do is to attach uh, the iPad uh, in front of the robotic head, which of course made him blind, (laughs) a little inconvenient. But uh, the organizers were as crazy as me and they really wanted me to um, make this experiment and see what what happened. Um, The the speech uh, was actually held or rather we organized it so that it would be held uh, together with uh, another speaker. And so basically she and I had a dialogue. Uh, The topic of the conference was digital health and the future of health. Um, The name of the conference was Frontiers of Health. So at Frontiers of Health Berlin, I delivered a talk remotely inhabiting, in a certain way, another human body, and my face was visible 
to the others. It went spectacularly. I had a lot of fun. The organizers crossed their fingers, were very courageous, and we pulled it off. The audience enjoyed it. The best part for me was that I saw a friend in the audience. I saw through the camera eyes of my telepresence human head, body. I saw him sitting there. And so at the end uh, of uh, my talk, as people were applauding, I said, hi, Michael, I see you are sitting in the audience. Why don't you come and give me a hug? And it was very quick, very sharp. He came on stage and uh, we hugged. The mime was sharp as well. He understood what was happening and even without seeing uh, Michael, he was uh, able to, to, to hug him. So this was a very, very strange experience and very different from many others. We are accustomed in interacting with people at a distance whether we are shouting, whether we are sending smoke signals, whether we are using the internet, interacting at a distance enlarges and empowers our social circle. It enables us to interact with people otherwise we couldn't interact with, to understand their point of view, to share a message with them, to come to agreements, hopefully to de-escalate de conflict, but in any way forming social interactions. And this has been accumulating through the ages to the point where today the quantity of options that we have available really is starting to move, in my opinion, into a qualitatively different experience. And the reason is, as often in my analysis, due to technology. We have the uh, availability of these tools that overcome uh, the skepticism of our mature senses. The kind of suspension of disbelief that children have as they play with dolls uh, is not something that comes naturally to adults. We have to train ourselves to feel that uh, we can create a relationship, even in those cases where the full spectrum of sensorial input and output is, is not available. But we are doing that constantly, and we are getting accustomed to that, also because the fidelity of these experiences intermediated by technology is becoming extremely high. Now, the next stages, of course, is not only going to be to output your sound, your voice, to enable others to see you visually, uh, to maybe uh, manipulate something remotely, like very importantly in one of the probably most important applications of telepresence already can be done uh, for robotically assisted surgery. And, and it is amazing how the enhancement that the surgeon receives through the robotic assistant is fundamentally improving the surgeon's ability to execute this extremely delicate operation, which is the surgery itself. And it can be done in conditions that otherwise wouldn't be possible. Laparoscopic surgery, for example, enables the traditional huge cuts in the body to be avoided and uh, um, the manipulators 
enter the body through very, very uh, small holes, natural or artificial, and uh, the um, ability of the body to heal after these laparoscopic surgeries is vastly better than not the alternatives. Certainly, this is an incredibly important application already today in the field of a certain kind of telepresence. But what is also going to happen is that we need to be able to perceive the world at an increasingly believable and heightened sensorial input, not only output. And this is where, of course, virtual reality and augmented reality play a role. Whether it is a dangerous environment that we need to explore, whether it is our need to collaborate with others that uh, are um, in the remote office or remote uh, plant, and uh, we are able to be shown and to show how to handle a given object or product uh, or production process. Whether maybe when we are operating in space. A beautiful uh, series of uh, short stories written by Ray Bradbury is called Martian Chronicles. It is a very melancholy and um, sweet and sour series of stories of Martian colonization. And some of the stories, very interestingly, represent how terrestrial humans are potentially going to be logged on Earth and the Martian colonization is going to happen in very different ways than not what we imagine. And that could be the case. However, one insurmountable obstacle for Earth-based humans to be on Mars through a telepresence robot is due to the relatively slow speed of light as measured on interplanetary distances. Light already takes one second to go to the moon and another second to come back. And if you ever played a, a game where you combat against uh, human or uh, non-human players uh, in an online server environment, you know how important the performance of your internet connection is. And in particular, what is called the ping time of your internet connection, which should be in the low millisecond range. If it is not, if your ping uh, is higher, a higher number, which uh, represents the um, delay uh, in, in milliseconds from the server and it is not in the low millisecond numbers, but tens or even hundreds of milliseconds, you will be fragged. You will be killed. Well, the telepresence human on the moon, or even worse, on Mars, uh, hopefully won't be killed, or rather the, the robot representing the telepresence, the human in telepresence won't be killed, but it would be tremendously hindered by this ping time that is huge and and uh, there is no way around it we dream of uh, hyperspace jumps but uh, in one of the uh, next episodes of the context i will tell you why we want to live in a universe that doesn't even allow hyperspace jumps why we want the speed of life to be the maximum speed achievable in, in our universe. So colonization of, of other planets by humans will be done either in person or by robots that are going to be autonomous, not remotely controlled by humans. 
maybe initially some of them from orbit. And uh, that is possible, even likely, especially with more extreme environments, because then from orbit, for example, uh, the common orbits uh, today uh, with the International Space Station are 400 kilometers uh, away from the, the surface. So the, uh, the ping time to a telepresence uh, robot is absolutely manageable from that distance. Telepresence is augmenting and empowering our social structures. We are already inhabiting immersive virtual worlds, uh, whether for gaming like uh, Fortnite uh, that uh, just in these past few days had um, a world championship with a very large uh, $3 million uh, first prize, with uh, professional Fortnite players from all over the world fighting for, for that prize and hundreds of thousands or millions of uh, viewers uh, following the, the games, or in immersive worlds that uh, allow a different kind of uh, creativity already from 10 years ago, Second Life or High Fidelity or why not? Minecraft that purchased by Microsoft, acquired by Microsoft for billions of dollars is extremely attractive for millions of players in a simplified world represented by the cubes that uh, you create and you destroy um, and there are amazingly complex worlds that uh, players in Minecraft have uh, achieved to put together. Now, I often talk about the Internet of Things, and I do believe that uh, these immersive online worlds, which I tend not to call virtual because they are importance is not diminished with respect to what other people call the real world. I prefer calling them online and physical rather than virtual and real. But I do believe that connecting these online worlds to the physical world is going to be extremely important. And of course, that is going to be done through the sensors and the actuators of an ever more comprehensive Internet of Things that is going to be deployed, and it is being deployed as we speak. A huge application area of uh, fifth uh, generation mobile networks is going to be in this direction. Now, telepresence as it empowers social interactions through ever more complete and high fidelity inputs and outputs of sensory experiences when complemented with artificial intelligence is going to lead to what we could call experiences of parallel lives. If you think about it, we are already trying to carefully manage the bandwidth and the attention that we dedicate to various moments in time of our lives. And these experiences are often both local and synchronous, but sometimes they are remote and asynchronous. The simplest example is receiving a letter, maybe a paper letter in an envelope. Do they still exist? And then reading what somebody else in an other place in another time wrote and responding to them, we act on their thoughts at least, but if we ask them to do something, we act also on their actions in that other place, in that other time. 
how complete their perception of us is and how complete our feedback as we receive it is just a question of technological levels. And when these levels go beyond the given threshold, who is there to say that we are not truly living parallel lives? It will be a question of just good enough levels. They don't have to be perfect. When you are a child and you play with a little toy car or with a, um, a posh, plush toy, you don't need that to be perfect in order to have wonderful and very important formative experiences. We won't need these telepresence avatars to be perfect in order for those experiences to represent something that we will call as true as those lived by our traditional physical bodies. So, are you excited about telepresence? Are you ready to try, whether in the traditional wheelie uh, robots with the screen hands, or whether uh, finding a mime that becomes your body, or in other ways, in online worlds, or in the experiences that uh, we will integrate and call a parallel life, one or more of those parallel lives. Let's explore it together. And I want to thank my supporters that are uh, becoming more and more numerous uh, week after week as I produce the context and new episodes are put online. These supporters are very precious. They are local and remote. They are close friends or people that I don't know that well. But they belong to a group of people who are enthusiastic about creating the future together. So if you are one of those people and want to be a supporter of the context, please join the others on Patreon for as little as $5 a week. And I am going to start very soon to produce interactive opportunities for all of the supporters to participate in the process. And I hope that you will participate in it together with me in creating the future together. Thank you and see you next week.